Hey, Jeff. Yo. Nice to hear from you, buddy. You too, bud. <laughs> Trevor hasn't been introduced yet. Jeff's been on the channel before. Trevor was at Dinosaur Adventure Land from January 15th of 2021 until... Early September. Okay. And your children were raised on Kent Hovind's videos. Yes. So you came to Dinosaur Adventure Land just like all of us with starry eyes. No, and no, not exactly. I knew I would stop there. I didn't think I would stay there. Um, but the way that Kent is, um, he put me to work right away and I figured a couple weeks and then it just worked out longer because of my life situation. So. Okay, so we're going to talk about the, the morning meeting. So after Kent Hovind oh. gave the order to bail Steve out of rehab against the doctor's orders when he'd only been in rehab for two days, Laszlo picked him up. And on the car ride home, Steve confessed a bunch of stuff to Laszlo. Mm -hmm. And the next day at the morning meeting, Kent Hovind told Laszlo to tell everybody at the morning meeting what Steve had confessed. And that's what Trevor yes. wants to talk about right now. Laszlo came in. You were there. Well, for one, Laszlo is startled at this point. And, he, and you can tell he's like, well, uh, he got the Jeep from embezzled money. He's been an intravenous drug user for a long time and never really stopped. Long, a list of, like, shocking Things. Can you elaborate on the embezzlement some more? Because that's one thing they're denying right now. But um, Laszlo apparently at that meeting told everybody that Steve Lynn had embezzled tens of thousands of dollars from donors. Hey, that's I, another I, reason I heard, we're heard, doing this recording. Heard, donors it, need it, to it, know. It, tens of thousands was the phrase. We were face bombing at other morning meetings, this one we were like staring off in the distance, like bewildered. Totally bewildered. We didn't know. We didn't know. And we also, we were under the impression that th this ministry is barely getting by. If we right. work a little harder, we'll make it. We're not, we didn't reach as many people as we can. And then money's going to his drugs and to his Jeep that is got carnival lights on it he's got massive tires and speaker systems and 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 you're like you brought that with some grannies some grannies donation this is going along with the same thing we were saying before about the recordings that just came out about kent laughing about ripping off my money and you're talking about grandma's donation well for those people who know me it was like stealing candy from a grandma because i was like giving from love yeah yeah it's a one thing to steal from just a stranger but it's another thing to steal from somebody who's trying to do a beautiful thing Cindy. He kept the fact that they were your donations from the staff. In the morning meetings, he would say, some donor bought us another side-by-side. -side. Some donor bought us the Kubata. He yeah. gave credit for it when you paid the, the van. All that, none, none of that. He never, that's, that's why I specifically said Cindy side-by-sides in that when I confronted him that day. Yes, you did. <sighs> this is craziness, man. Well, this is, this is just <laughs> insanity from top to bottom. I love both of you because you're getting angry and it makes me feel like you can't talk about this kind of thing in a normal, oh, well, this is yeah, how it the was. We then the embezzled, the embezzled, and then yeah, and then I then I bailed out his credit card, and then he mocks me publicly. You know, it's like. But I'm gonna keep my voice down, and I'm not gonna be angry, and I'm not gonna be shocked, right? It's just right. like not appropriate. This stuff yeah, is you, you, enraging. Cindy, did you get the part? about because giving Kevin a, a snide jab. Kevin was working 
on the floor in the church, and he yeah. was the last one. Everybody else had bailed because it was too hot, and they, they were sick of Kent's abuse. Yes. And Kevin and, was hey, the lone well, person. Hey, Trevor, were you there when Kevin almost, Kevin, the guy climbing without the ropes on a 12-12 pitch? with no safety, yes. not this. Go ahead, do you want to tell it? Because that shows you the level of dedication this young man was okay. showing. Yes, he was up there on that roof that I refused to get on. Mm-hmm. Me yeah, too, basically. Kevin was up there and he slipped and stuck his foot on the skylights. And Kent got pissed off at him because, hey, you're ruining my skylight. Slipped and was falling and almost, and and basically put his foot on the, it's real thin, I mean, your foot would go right through it. It's thin plastic, it's the cheesiest skylight you can possibly even buy. And, and, and kids at the, we're all looking up at Kevin. The job would have stopped if Kevin wasn't up there because Jeremy wasn't there that day, the only two guys that would climb up on right. that steep right. with, with with nothing. You're climbing the, the rafters between Doc saying, run the screw, run the screw. The, the, the way would say, uh, let me do this, let me do this. Don't yell, run the screw. I've, yeah. I've got to get my skid it right. So Kevin almost falls. And was almost basically hits the plastic. Doc yells, "Watch the plastic!" Doc is Kevin, 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 the quiet dude. The way Kevin looked at him, said, "I'm gonna come down there." Uh, you know, Kevin gave him a look that was like, and Kevin was startled because he almost fell. And nothing about hold on tight, son. Hold on tight. Or, all right, well, get the vests, get the hooks, get the harnesses, watch the plastic! I agree. So Um, that was when it was stick framed. Months and months later, they're finally finishing the inlaid custom floor, and everybody has quit, and everybody has seen what kind of person that is running this DAL and they show a picture of it. I wasn't overly thrilled with the picture of the floor, but other than that, he says, and then there's Kevin working on it. It took him a zillion hours. And then he says, but we need to get him a wife so he'll stop griping. Right. Oh, that's poor. And this guy is the one who stuck it out to the end. Kevin Thompson. And not- I'm totally disappointed because truly, I was the only one that came down to help you, right? Yeah. And then I think I had a week and a half that I was still there after you. Not one single person came to help me out, talk to me, do anything. Truly. These are people. Trevor, <laughs> let me say something, okay? It's pretty likely that they were ordered by Kent Hovind not to help you because Kent Hovind would not allow people to talk to anybody who was going to be leaving on sad terms. He considered that uh, gossip or uh, sowing discord. And I kind of wanted to get a witness on this because that's what he did to me. And he told people, don't talk to Cindy, don't answer her texts, block her, don't help her. And if you do, then you will be considered rebelling against Kent Hovind and you'll be um, kicked off the property. This is Kent Hovind's M.O. I just want to get your guys' witness on that, that that's true. Oh, it absolutely is, and you mentioned it. I thought your... your, um interview with your mom was good thank I you really, i enjoyed that you you kind of could tell there's a, a little bit of tension and yes that, i'm telling you that endeared you to people 
because that's how it is with families. You're like, okay, mom, yes, back, get back to the point. Now <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's how everybody is with their family, and you mentioned it as isolating you, and and then what they call it, you know, I mean, in, in more fundamental um, kind of Puritan Amish types, it's called shuns, shuns, and uh, you know, and I think that was the same thing as um. As what you meant by isol- isolationism or whatever you had called it. Jeff, I never thought of that. You're totally yeah, right. Yeah, of course it is. And you know and, the... Uh, oh, yeah. And I want... I mean, a couple of shocking things from your interview with your mom. I don't want to get... But up, up, this is to your point. The fact that when you said that your propane tank was vandalized, that is like... I don't want to say it, but that is like not your average run-of-the-mill vandalism. That is a scary, scary thing. I'm glad you got that out there. That that, that, that this is the kind of person you're t- dealing with. Pain tank, and we're not talking a grill. We're talking the big job, the big one. And then the fact that the other thing was that the Steve Steve wasn't even doing the inventory paltry sales he gets and uh, that the, the, the ministry gets and, and and the book isn't even there yeah i mean and when i would go to kent about it kent would act like he cared and then as soon as he would go talk to steve about it suddenly he didn't care anymore and it always stunned me and in fact the secretaries as well were stunned that apparently nobody gives a dang that customers are waiting two weeks to have their order filled. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's another thing we used to say about the construction. We'd say, if this was a business, we'd be out of business. Right. Running the business, that makes you think, hmm, he's not overly concerned that that he gets his sales. Huh, the money he's living on, you're not seeing. Or, or he wants to keep those, no, you know, I, 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 what do I know? But that is not, you know, if that's how, if that's your bread and butter, and you don't care. It's not consistent with someone who says that they care about the ministry. And those of us who do care about the ministry and want to see things done well are shamed abused wow. not just shamed abused kicked out mm. gaslit did we finish um everything that trevor wanted to bring out about laszlo and what he shared well i w- well i think this it was a couple days after that and you talk about speaking out i think this is when i went too far when we were, we were starting to sink in, and the real depravity was coming so one after another, we felt like we were taking body blows. So at the morning meeting, and then he says, "Oh, Steve's back. Uh, Steve, Steve's coming back. Steve's back." And, and we, and we, we repented, so we forgive him and all that. Everybody's had trouble with drugs. And he also said that they recovered everything that he embezzled, which was a full-on lie. Yes, yes. So, the, so this was not recorded, but I, but I raised my hand, and I, Trevor, I hope you were there. I, you, but there wasn't any. I looked around and I said, "Oh, there's no guests here." So I raised my hand and I said, "Is Steve gay?" He was, no, no, gay. No, no, he's not gay. And I said, really disturbing. I said, and then he busted off so much that I wasn't going to let him off the hook. And I said, do you know what S and M is? But I used the full words. And he goes, yeah, 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 and I, of course, there was, I, well, there was nowhere else to go from there because he brushed it off like it was it was an average question, like it was a run-of-the-mill question. Like, well, uh, did he realize that he had gay bondage films? That's what I was trying to get across. 
So, you actually asked Kent that? Oh, point blank. Very near the one I recorded when I when when Freddie and and when the girls were crying. It was it was either the day before that, the morning or two before that, and so I knew my my goose was cooked. So well, it's like an obvious question. I didn't know that there was that uh, gay bondage loop on the other computer. No, it's bad enough that it's that it's there. Secondly, on loop, and then thirdly, on the screen saver. This is depravity of its worst kind. Well, for Kent to say no, he's not gay is ridiculous. He didn't show concern to his, he got his mask, his mask was on. He doesn't give a dang. What? Oh, sure. Yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when you were in the cabin and he put his hand up in the air and he goes, oh, yeah, you mean cables on the ceiling? Uh-huh. What, did you, I don't know if you heard, you probably didn't. <sighs> Some of the recordings. Of, um, I've heard a lot of those. Truly, that was what opened my eyes. I spent a month and a half, two months there listening to all that stuff well it's shocking and one of them Kent Hoban is talking to Brady Byram and he goes oh because Brady goes uh, does she have any living children because they're talking about whether I'll need the money if I'm dead right what a creep anyway um, no I actually just watched some of that today too okay good them, yeah them talking about um, yes wow well, anyway, go ahead. Would I would, yeah. So anyway, he said that my daughter hates me and doesn't want anything to do with me, and that's just plain not true. I mean, she she doesn't want anything to do with me, and she doesn't call, but right. she doesn't hate me that I know of. She hugged me when she was here a couple months ago. Right. It's just a, I'll tell you a what. Mean any, yes. Everything you're going to hear from him is not going to be good. It's always going to make you sound like the evil person. Because um, he really does have a full-on smear campaign against me. Against you? Yes, mostly you right now because he screwed you out of $150,000. And because I'm coming um, after it. And you're the one coming after it. Uh, suing him for the uh, body slam. And, and right, right. But that being said, he treats everybody the same way everybody and see that's what i want to get out it, i mean you have more lesser and more degrees of how he treats you depending on but he treats everybody the same way so it's part of I, his agenda to make you feel small if not yeah but he's slick about it i mean really slick about it when i showed up there Truly, within five minutes of talking with him, what do you know how to do? Well, I can build you a house. Okay. And so he put me to work. And I felt needed, kind of, I guess. Um, But it's funny how quick, once you catch on to him, how quick he turns on you. That's, I guess that's my point. Yeah. So you did not come to stay long term. You just came to visit and you got drafted. Well, yeah, I figured a night or two. Um, actually, I called the head and said, "Hey, you guys still looking for volunteers?" Oh no, we sh- we've had too many people through here. <laughs> oh, well, do you have an RV hookup? Yeah, you can stay. So I pulled in and I talked to Kent and went and ate lunch and he put me to work. Because I had some skills. Ah, yes. So, well, okay, so you didn't exactly have stars, but you definitely had respect. What changed? Oh, boy. (laughs) Truly, it took me five, six months before I saw, really. When we started building the church, that's kind of where... I I got a true vision of Kent. 
Yes, I think Jeff had some disputes over that church building as well, as many people online have stated that it's going to fall over in the first storm. All right, and I warned him for weeks about not putting enough blocking in, not just not enough anything. I've got some real issues with that thing. Do you re Trevor, do you know the, remember the situation with changing the trusses? Changing the truss from the... It's a pole barn kit, right? Right. And then, and then they, he had Laszlo change the angle on the uh, trusses. Right. And then... Uh, and then man, I feel like that... Uh, that wasn't my biggest issue. My biggest issue was the first day when he got involved. The first day... Um, we had the walls up, and truly, it was before this that I saw his change in personality. He um, kept, kept throwing out a bunch of plywood on the floor and then demanding we get the roof up before the rain ruins it. It's a thousand dollars of plywood. So I think it was three, four times we put plywood out, drug it back, put it back at me. It's just yes. ridiculous. Yeah. But, um, I think the moment that I checked out of that project was when we got to the gable lands because he did the center trusses and then got to the gable lands. And I went to get the tools to the string lines and levels and everything to line it all up. And, oh no, we'll just eyeball it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> That showed up later on. Basically, the only one while I was there that was voicing the concerns of yeah. they would have a brain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, the guys that don't, month after month after month, I, at, the, at first I was like, well, you know, the, the, he's, the, he's once, he, one of them said to me, I'm just here to help. I'm the mover. I'm going to move the things from point A to point B. As far as his ministry and that, I'm here to help it physically. But what he does with it is not any of my concerns. Right. That only held water for just so long. Right. Trevor, I'm really glad that, uh, you, you, that, we, that we were there, that you were there, towards the end there when we were working on the uh you know up in the um the the old dining hall the the, the chaos and the strangeness was so, coming so fat, hard and heavy that every week i mean when it was his arrest and his cops and then the helicopters are flying over and then steve's arrest and then all the internet finding out about it reading the reading worst nightmare and, and then saying, oh, what is going on here? This is, I'm glad I had someone on calm like yourself was able to go through that with. Because looking back, it was an asylum. <laughs> I remember, actually, Jeff, I remember telling you at one point, this is when I was Kevin Nine before you were gone. It used to be a beautiful view out there. And then all of a sudden, it's like a dark cloud. It's like it's oppressing. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I, I, I hide in my cabin, and every time I hear a side-by-side, -side, I peek out the blinds kind of thing, you know? Um, Me too. Yes. And that's, wow. What a way to live. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now... Back to like the the morning meetings and that. With now there was a guy, and this was that concerns the church and the morning meetings. There was a guy began the sheet rocking, and he was good. And he, he came with his family. I want to say his name was James, but I, I can't recall. But he was yeah, from he, Texas, came with his family, and he was crushing it. He's the right of the work in the church, right? Yes. Yes. You remember him, kind of a kind of a baby face, but with a oh yeah, he had a baby face with his beautiful, super cute kids. 
I, I said, you look just like your little kid. <laughs> him and his kid had a baby face. <laughs> but my point, my point is, is that we were face palming at the morning meetings when he was he was saying that to paraphrase to quit sleeping and how come you didn't get that wall up? And right. I took, I've got jobs waiting on me. <laughs> the guy's been there like a week. He's been busting his head. I remember. Yes. And like, oh, you're not fast enough. You're kind of, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> that said something we both face palmed at the morning meeting. <laughs> and then we, we got started setting up and he started packing his van. Yes, that and, guy, and, that uh, guy here, comes, here comes Doc, curtsy in the wall. He's doing his curtsy. And he's like, where's James? Curtsy, where's James? Curtsy. And I'm like, uh, he left, man. He you had to hear him for the last time. He's out of here. <laughs> what, is, or, what does it mean? I actually, I went down there and talked to him while he was acting. Hey, bud, what's going on? No. Right, but he was not happy, packing up no. his van, stopping the job after he was on, like, two levels of scaffolding doing a gable wall. And right. Like, that all you got done. He's leaving in the middle of the job. He's packing up his family and taking off. <laughs> Screw you. You finished the job yourself. Yes, that's a testament to Kent. Yes. <laughs> and you, you were saying something, something about... When you had been working on a church for 10 hours on the hot roof in the Alabama heat, and he pulled up in his buggy and said something like, it's not a vacation or something? Oh, oh, yeah. he, said it, oh he said it. He did it every day, Cindy. He said it a union job, and then, and then he's like, come on. And then, and then he's like, I got to go give another tour. And then he puts on a fake nice face for the tour people, and he comes back to us with pouring sweat standing there discussing what our next move is and he considers that why is everybody standing around and you're like it's literally 100 degrees and 100% humidity and he had no no compassion about it completely fake to the guests goes and says I got, you. I got waters for you guys I got waters for you as soon as he hands you that water, he's like, come here, I'll come over here, I gotta show you that here, you gotta do it. And I was like, did you give me a water because I'm thirsty? Or did you, you give me a water so you could give me another task? <laughs> hey, let me add to that. He gives you the water, you don't have time to drink it. <laughs> you know what else, guys? I just gotta say this. He would take the water bottles that were used and fill them up. That's what he was giving us. Yeah. Did you notice? I don't like that at all. Did you I, Did you mean. notice that the water was a little bit uh, dirty colored and the bottles were that, dirty? That's what he was giving people. I actually, I went to Walmart and bought a $20 jug to fill up with ice and the well water. So you noticed that he was yes. giving you dirty yes. bottles? Yes. I yes. flipped. I he's flipped. Taking, he's taking I used to, bottles and filling them back up and throwing them in the fridge. Um, I used to take them. On there. Yes. Yes. I used to take them out of the fridge and throw them in the garbage. And I okay. used to tell him that is a violation of health and safety, especially with COVID. Good for you. That's for right. God's That's sake, right. what is the matter with you? It's like intentionally hurting somebody. Yes. And one of the, Will from California, he was doing construction with us, did fine, you know, great guy. But then he switched to the office, and then he'd come talk to us on the job, and he'd bring us office water that were from the office fridge. Ken, on the morning meeting, says, we're spending a fortune on water. I really, I mean, 
He, me and Mark Lady would roll our eyes from across the room, <laughs> and it was just so funny. <laughs> you know, are you spending a fortune on water? Really? Is it is it costing you? You're paying the. Are you paying the electric? Are you? Okay, now hey, on well, the same line of not giving a rat about his workers, I want you to describe what you were telling me that he yelled at you because he never yelled in front of me and it was like he was being a fake Kent in front in front of Cindy so that Cindy would think something different of him and he's making a big deal out of the fact that I yelled at him and the other issue I want you to elaborate on is when the person got his finger cut and you said Kent didn't care and how did you know that and what did you see on that um Honestly, Trevor, that's all. I mean, I couldn't believe it. The the um the kind of uh, the blonde haired dude from California named Alex who had a, who had they had a this this guy. guy. Yeah, that this dude is that it would have cut him in half. That is a thirty foot long sheet of right. of corrugated metal, and it's sli- it's safety rope slips the off of, off of a clamp that it's clamped by and it comes sliding down the roof the guy from what I understand had his thumb been in any other position he'd have lost that a 30 actually, foot piece of metal roof I, slipped so it's huh? like a 30 foot piece of roof metal slipped numerous times I, I straight armed one of them myself we, that's what I. That's why I said in one of my recordings. But I said we risked our lives for you for this real thing. And Cindy, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The the roof metal. I mean the roof the the church plywood. And during this time, do you guys remember that all the um all the lumber prices went through the roof? Right at this exact time. Do you guys remember that? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So the so at that time the r- lumber prices went through the roof. Well, it's, so he's he's got to put the the three quarter subfloor plywood down. No, three he don't want, He don't want to pay sixty bucks a sheet. So right. he goes and gets three eighths, yes. which is like a potato chip. <laughs> and, and lays the whole floor with three eighths, and I come up, and it's three eighths, no glue, and drywall screws. I'm sorry if I'm yelling. This is like an hey. anthem to construction people. Jeff, I'm there with you. Okay. And he came back later. The first three eighths was down. Then he tried to felt paper it, and it poured rain on it. It buck, it's buckling, and and then the he put the he sandwiched the second three eighths, and now it's moisture between the two layers. Now yeah. your mold has a it has water and a food source and air. Yeah. And yeah. it's gonna rot to pieces in five years. I'll give it ten. Now and wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, so it's wait a minute. Over first. Uh, okay. and, so, and so Cindy, to it, answer your question, that let me calm down a bit. To answer your question, Cindy, the reason he was yelling is ultimately money. <laughs> because the plywood, now the second layer, was going to get rained on again. <laughs> and be totally mush, and then it'd be a complete loss. And I have to pull it back up. So, so he was, so he was, he so mean to us to get the roof on, so he wouldn't look like a jack by first of all putting two layers of three eighths with wet, with wet felt paper between them, no subfloor glue, and using drywall screws on your subfloor. And Jeff, you know how many times he had the scrubs picking those and piling them back up and then spreading them back out and piling them back up? Yes. He kept, he kept sending us texts. I need some help right now. 
brother. Um, uh, <laughs> I might pay you a little extra, but I'm going to leave a $1,000 in plywood. Well, you dumb, stupid. <laughs> so wait a minute. With tarps, and then there were puddles on the tarps, and then the puddles are splashing <laughs> into the plywood. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God. Jeff. It was so mad. Jeff, hang on. No, he would take a, a pile of plywood. Everybody spread it out. And then the rain's coming. I mean, truly, it's rainy. It's it's monsoon season. Um, <laughs> and, 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 three, and three, four times, I'm going to lose $1,000 in plywood if you don't come help me. And it truly got sickening. I'm not helping you. So he was... He was he would spread it out so that it could be screwed down, and then he didn't have any laborers, and the rain would come. And there was no roof, and so he had to pull it back in two or three times. Just stupid. Clever. We did say say why don't we um why don't we just paint, roll roll um waterproof paint on this thing because we're they're calling for storms. And there's, we got to get the walls and the roof up. This thing's going to be sitting for a while before the roof is on. You know, at least a week to uh, ten days. Hey, and Jeff. there were summer storms. Hey, Jeff. We tried to save his over and over and over and over, and over again. <laughs> hey? That's right, man. Jeez. When you and I got the soffit job, I... Uh, praise Jesus. I mean, that was just, you and I could do something. Uh, yeah. The rest of the building is, is screwed. It's coming down in the first storm. I'm not going to stand next to it. Uh, <laughs> but you and I, we had some good times putting soffit up. And, and truly, that was the best time I had there. Um, so because part funny. of that recording didn't get recorded last time you were talking about the soffit job, I'm going <laughs> to explain a little bit. So... We were talking okay. about how Kent would pull up in his buggy and insult the oh, crew yeah. and then pull away and that they were so glad when they got the soffit job because Kent left them alone and right. they could just, just work hey, like normal we'll people. Jump. We would get up there and bust our ass in Alabama heat in the midsummer. We would sit down and discuss the job less than five minutes. I mean, we're all guzzling ice water. I mean, we're, we're sweating. You're not going to shock, kind of, I guess. Yeah. Um, and he would pull up less than five minutes after we sat down. Every time. <laughs> um, what is this? A union job? Yeah. No, a union job would give us breaks. <laughs> yeah, that, yes. We'd be forced back into working, and after doing this for five, six weeks, that's kind of where I got to, eh, no more. <laughs> kind of like the guy that packed up and left. You're like, nope. Yeah. And Jody yeah, brought yeah. something like that up in her interview last week, that a guy that was doing the tile down at the lake did the same thing. Kent yeah. pulled up and insulted him after he'd been working his rear end off, and he packed up his family and left. Mm-hmm. And he was, and he's like, where's, where's, the, and just completely oblivious about it. Where's, where's James? Oh, he's not on. Uh, he, uh, you don't hear yourself, apparently. Actually, he's not oblivious. Oh, that's kind of, I think it's oh. calculated. Um, you think it's what? Calculated? Very calculated. It's, um, my conclusion on it is that, I mean, I didn't see a lot of it because I'm not working construction and I'm cloistered in the house at this point. Right. But what I think is that he, I saw him on numerous occasions greeting new people who came in and right. he would give them a demeaning job. And it was right. almost as though he was testing them to see, are you going to be submissive to me? Because if you're going to balk at this demeaning job, then perhaps I don't want you around because I only want people who are going to bow to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And truly, 
whether he realizes it or not, that's what he's doing. Well, and that goes along with what what you were saying about that's why Jeff got canned because he had the nerve to speak up and he wasn't going to bow to um, unreasonable requests. And if truly, at that time, Jeff was the only one saying anything. Well, um, and that's why I got the boot as well. Right. And I, I didn't was want to be behind this, but I was already I already had plans to get out of there, and so I was kind of being quiet. And I, I think my biggest disappointment in that place is that Jeff and I had friends there, okay, people that we would cook steaks with and had barbecues, and, and, and when it came down to the fire, mm -hmm. nobody else, nobody, nobody showed up. So mm -hmm. nobody showed up to help. No, uh, for I went down to help Jeff that that Friday. Oh, you're talking about when Jeff moved. Oh. Oh my no, gosh! So when Jeff was when he was kicked out, that was so much bullshit. That's what I mean. Really? So what you're saying oh. is that when Jeff was packing because he got kicked out, that nobody showed up to help. That's what you meant. Not a single person. Yeah. After Jeff did um, three years. Yes. And was very yes. loved. Yes. Yeah, uh, they were. They were, they were all, they were all afraid. They were, uh, maybe afraid is too strong of a word. No, sir, it's no, not. Jeff, no, no, you're right. They did the same thing to me after you were gone. I was left to my own devices. Nobody, nobody showed up to offer a hand, say goodbye, anything, nothing. Okay? And Jeff was saying how, you know, after three years... You should have like a going away party. Right. But Kent Hoven, he no, he operates no. with let fear. Me, Cindy, let me tell you what Kent Hoven did that day. He said, "You can have what was it? Eight hundred bucks? Five hundred bucks? I don't remember. It was a certain amount if you get out by this time." Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I knew that, and I went down there, and I tried to help him. And I actually, it was, you were done by less than 2 o'clock. Um, and if I remember right, I said, you Trevor, 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 it was worse than you're portraying it as. He said, oh, of course, the number of first was 2500 And, of course, they did that amount almost in car repair for me. My truck was wrecked after three years in that sand gravel whatever that it was a grand or 1100 or 1200 right he said 1200 and he said and every hour it's a hundred less and yes. he while he is giving tours he's giving me and i'm packing and the packing part is you're pulling out boxes speaking of memories and stuff you're pulling out stuff and it's it's your moving is an emotional thing and, and, and he'd be on a tour with a family and texting me, one more hour, how long would it take you to, I can... hundred dollars less. hundred dollars less. How long, how long would it take you to earn a hundred bucks? hundred dollars less. Yep. Too bad. Just yep. like really provokingly, Trevor, I, again... And you're across the other side of the country, so I want to tell you, I, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for just being there at that time because I could have lost it. Hey. I could have done something horrible. Me too. Hey, you helped me too, buddy. All right, so back to the... So, back. wait, wait, wait. Can I please say something? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Please. So, yep. Jeff, what you're saying is that perhaps there might be a good reason for yelling and screaming and being angry at Ken Holman? Yes. Oh, that oh I'm, my God. I'm not a, that I'm not a bipolar idiot and I'm not a, <laughs> a <laughs> angry, <laughs> brawling, and contentious woman. Uh, and I, I think uh, as much as you've revealed, I still, and I think people, AJ... These other guys, uh, they they empathize with you, but I don't think anybody really can know 
what how bad it must have been for you yeah. because of I know what how bad it was for me and when he, when when he has the evil eye towards you it is not anything near Christianity and, yeah. I, and that's what I wanted about I didn't want no going away party I wanted a mentor to put to pray to, to send me out into the world because I dedicated my life to learning about the Lord and I wanted to uh, and, 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 and that's how it was supposed to be you send these young men out the way Jesus sent the apostles if you're a minister yeah, sure you know what, well, Jeff? I've actually well. been in churches where they it's called a commissioning. You're commissioned. You get sent yes. you get sent out with you get it it's called the hot seat. You sit in the chair and everybody in the church gathers around you and lays hands on you and prays over you that the Lord would bless you and go before you right. and guide you. It's called love and it's something that Kent Hoven knows absolutely nothing about right yes exactly I need to say so. something else I was approached by somebody else who happened to be a witness when Kent Hoven received the check for you Ernie Land wrote a check for $2,500 for, for Jeff However, he made the check payable to Kent Hovind because, because he aids and abets Kent Hovind's disgrace. And he knew that he wanted Kent to have the discretion to use it over your head and punish you. Really? So the check was made payable to Kent Hovind for $2,500, but it was for you. And so, mm -hmm. since you only got 400 of it, what do you think happened to the rest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, and uh, he skims, that's, that's his business. Yes. He skims off of, they say, oh, we need $300 to take the guys to lunch. There's about eight people go. I'm like, what are they eating for lunch? They go into a, a buffet and he keeps the rest of the 300 that it's just it's it's just that times times everything down the line and and you can't prove it and it's like oh no i had the timber it's my van i drove you know and he can justify it but at the same time there's enough squishiness in there for him to have a comfortable living that and and pretend that he's uh, that he's it's uh, building the kingdom. Uh, no, hey, hey, I have, I, I have, got it. I ha no, I have, no, listen to me. Okay, your I turn. Got it. He he's living like a mi millionaire on a pauper's dream. Now let me yeah. just say something that is tied into this. And in one of the recordings that just came out, Brady Byram is. Uh, praising him by saying how oh yeah like you really don't have a Bentley and your five garages and ha ha these people that are saying that you're a money grubber you really ought to rethink all those you know Mercedes you have well okay Kent Hovind does not have a Rolex watch and he does not have a Bentley or a Mercedes but Kent Hovind is just as much of a money grubber as those televangelists that do. Yes. Only yeah. his choice is building. He skims money, not for a Rolex, but for building Dinosaur Adventure Land. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if he justifies it because he believes that it's building God's kingdom, or if this is all about his image, or if it's just a scam to keep the income hey. coming in, because if you quit building, they quit giving. Cindy, mm -hmm. I think the last thing you said nailed it on the head. Mm -hmm. That's they what I heard about... ...building in order to keep the, the income coming in. Oh, yeah. we've got to build that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
and you and and everybody love everybody loves progress. Everybody says, "Oh, oh, you build, oh, you build, oh, good, good for you." You know, so it's a it's a wonderful it's a very effective disguise. I oh, believe yeah. that's the same thing Jimmy Baker did and Jerry Falwell and Hiles oh, yeah. Anderson. They just kept building. All three of them. Hey, Kent is a grifter. Mm -hmm. That is what he is. Um, I don't think he started out that way, but I think that he, somewhere along the way, realized money is, I can live like a millionaire and act like a grifter. Yep. That's why the locals don't like him, because he was going door to door asking for things. Was bringing in a, a million bucks a year. Three things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he's no better than the person, and I say this with a grain of salt, because the person out there begging for gas may need gas. But Kent is no better than that. That's what he's doing, mm -hmm. um, but on a bigger scale. Yeah. Now you guys started to tell another story about Kent Hovind yelling at you, and it involved the drone and. Um, oh, that was me. It really, it really showed the real person. Whereas, was, it, it, it just real putting unnecessary stress on the situation. To go ahead, Trevor. It was, but from my, from a objective third person point of view saw the whole picture and that was me i'll tell you what you were the first person i came to complain to about it and that was a final straw for me i already was planning to leave that's when my work ethic went to zero i'm not helping you anymore um, that's really a sad thing for uh, for you for him uh, for I mean how to, to have a guy to, to have a guy come to that point how does that happen right I just spent six seven months working my ass off for God and Kent Hovind and he demoralized point. you to such a point that you wanted to quit yes no that was the actual point where I did quit that's where I yeah. You're going to get this job, I will do this for you, but it's going to be the job I ever did. And you know what? This is kind of actually funny. I, I talked to um, Jeff and Kevin up there after, after I did this job. <laughs> I did the worst job I could possibly do on this trim job. And Kent comes by, oh, perfect, brother, that's, that's insane. Oh. So, he does But you were going to tell about the yelling, okay? Because he, oh, yeah, he came down. He yes, is reaming yes. me up one side, down the other, slandering me publicly because I yelled at him. And I didn't right. think he ever yelled. And I right. just want to display his hypocrisy no, here. No, I will tell you. Okay, so... I have been nothing but Y-A-A-B. You are a blessing, brother. Okay? Yes, that's Kent Hovind's um, little uh, acronym. Y-A-A-B. <laughs> and this has to do with Elias. But he was in cabin eight, I was in cabin nine. He was doing drones and doing video work. And it was interesting. I mean, the drones were neat. He had some neat stuff. So he and I were talking. Kent was down there by the pig farm. He ran the drone down there to show how he does his tours, and he's so fucking amazing. Elias and I were still talking. Kent drove up in his side by side, and he got out, and he was—he's—he's he's looking at Elias, and, and he came up to me. Yeah, that's kind of—I don't know—I don't know if cowardly is the word, but that is that is, it's, it's, there's something wrong with that. He's not looking at me, but he's—he's he's looking at Elias. He says, "I told you." to do that trim job an hour and a half ago. That's when I, I just turned around and I started walking away. Yeah, it was, Cindy, it was over the top. As, I far, as, as far as there were my tools at the dining hall and I'm not no longer using my tools. I My, my tools get borrowed, they don't get returned. Yes. So, so, so Trevor, in order to trim do exterior trim on an ex on an exterior door 
with with out of oak. You've got to cut it to width. You've got to cut it to length. You've got to you've got to secure it. Not involved there, even you're though right. it's, it's rough cut oak. So you're right. Yeah. External the the skin the skin of the building wasn't absolutely complete. I don't believe there were issues with it. So Jeff, what you're trying to say is. It's not necessarily an hour and a half job, number one. And number two, wouldn't it be okay if he's spending time observing the drone and fellowshipping? Yeah, exactly. The fellow that he was took this fellowship to zero for us. There and was no, you were no longer a pair of hands, not a person. Actually, in my mind, it went from truly, I spent eight months working this off it, so in my mind it went from you are a blessing to you took